Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw, and I'm here with Miguel Sanz, who's the Director General of the Tourist Office of Spain, Torrespana. And we're here to talk a little bit about Spain today and what's going on. Uh, obviously, everything is opening up in Europe, and Spain is opening up too. It has been open for a while. I was lucky enough, if you see my background, I'm not really in Madrid. Miguel really is in Madrid, so that's a different. And uh, I was able to visit Madrid a couple of times and really loved it. I uh, really got a good exposure to the city. But right now, we're going to talk to Miguel about all things Spain on Insider Travel Report. Now, first of all, Miguel, uh, how are you? And we already established you are in uh, Madrid, right? Yes, I am in Madrid, in the capital city of, of Spain. I'm, I'm well, on a, on, a, on a personal note, I'm happy that finally we are looking at long-haul vacations and I'm planning my, my next trip next week. I mean, next week, next month. But uh, I'm also planning my summer vacation uh, and I'm, I'm hoping to go long-haul. So uh, on a personal note, very happy to be planning holidays, very pl happy to be planning long-haul long -haul vacations. No, absolutely. People are getting back to thinking about that. And Europe is tops on the list. And Spain is one of the top ones there. Uh, now, let's, let's go back to what's going on right now. Uh, wh what are the entry requirements today for U.S. travelers going to Spain? Uh, what are the protocols and guidelines? And ha have you relaxed them a bit? Sure. Um, Spain opened its borders um, last summer. June 2021, um, with a commitment um, of stability. We, we knew we are one of the favorite destinations in the world. We couldn't be back and forth. Um, once we said we were opening to international visitors, we, we had to, to keep open. So we took that a step in June last year. We've been open since. Uh, visitation since has been growing steadily. Uh, from, you know, we, we had 83 million visitors in 2019, the second most visited country in the world. Right. Um, in, in last year, we already recovered a third of those. We had around 35 million, 34 million visitors, international visitors to Spain. Um, and, and that is just mainly the second half of the year. So things are looking bright. Uh, if entry requirements to Spain is you have to be either fully vaccinated, right. uh, which if, and if your last dose of the vaccine was more than 270 days ago, you need a booster uh, shot uh, and you need a certification for that. Um, uh, and if you are not vaccinated, the only way you can get into Spain is if you have a recovery certificate um, okay. up to 180 days old. So either fully vaccination or a recovery certificate, no more than 180 days old. No, children are under ch children under twelve are exempt um, as long as they are traveling with their parents. If if children between the age of twelve and seventeen, they can either come if they are fully vaccinated, or if they are not, they can come with their parents with a PCR test. No, that's great, uh, and I, and I think there's a website you can go to to get the update. I sure. think it's called travelsafe.spain.info. Uh, so yes. that's a, a, gr a great place to go to get the latest and greatest. I know my challenge was never with the vax cards or, or the testing. It was always was filling out the health questionnaire. Uh, but I, I learned well in Spain. I had to do that a few times. So I think I got that one down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's important. Everyone needs to fill the, the um, SDPH online questionnaire to get a QR code um, to, that will let you into the country. But, um, um, but it's, a, it's an easy procedure. Uh, as, as long as you're fully vaccinated, uh, you fill in the, 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 it has to be online. That's right. important. There is not a paper form. It's only an online form. Um, you get a QR code and you're ready to go. That's fantastic. And I, once again, I said, I, I'm getting that one down because I've been there a few times. So it's good. Now, once you are in Spain, what are the protocols that travelers and, and actually all citizens have to follow? Do you, do you have to worry about masks or do you have to show vaccination cards? Okay, so there is no mandatory uh, requirement to wear a face mask outdoors, um, but there is still one for indoors, which may be, may be taken away in the short. I mean, you know, news is on, we are already talking about how long this will happen, when will this happen? And, and uh, I think that uh, for the summer season or for the spring season, what we will have is a mandatory face mask for public transport, hospitals, 
and places like that. No, that's for fantastic. The time being, yeah, for the time being, it's mandatory indoors uh, um, and, and it's not mandatory outdoors. Yeah, in fact, that's they're easing it, the restrictions here in the States, the U.S. as well. Um, I think by the time, maybe by the time, even, even with by the time this interview gets out, the, you may, may have some changes in that as well. So, uh, which is always good news. Although I, I, I personally, I'm sort of getting used to wearing masks all over the place. So it doesn't bother me uh, that much. Yeah. There are no requirements um, as far as I know. And they, I mean, anyone can, can look this up at TravelSafe uh, and Spain, and, and Spain.info, um, which is the safest way to know what's, you know, mandatory at any given time. But um, um, there is no requirement to, to show your QR code or your vaccination status uh, when you go into restaurants or museums or any other place, shops. Um, so it's just uh, the face mask that is, is mandatory when you go inside a building at this point. Uh, maybe when this uh, interview comes out, it will not be uh, mandatory anymore. Okay, so check that website to make sure. But um, it, and and museums. You mentioned museums. Boy, you got incredible museums in Madrid and elsewhere around the country. And uh, it's it's important you do the right thing so you can go visit those things. Now you talked a little bit about the numbers for 2019 and how you did last year. What's the outlook uh, so far for 2022? Uh, and and then uh, I mean I know it's it's still early, but what's your uh, what's your hope and and what is your what are your expectations for visitation? So we are we are optimistic, and the numbers certainly look good. Um, uh, for the whole year, we have a, a an international air seat capacity that exceeds uh, that that we had in 2019 by three percent. So so we are already ahead of the air capacity that the seat air capacity that we had in 2019. Um, you know, every month the the growth of of, of the numbers um, um, it's looking better than the previous month. So uh, uh, we are almost at, we, we have surpassed the 80% mark recovery in comparison, in comparison to the same period uh, of, of 2019. Um, this will speed up in the uh, spring and summer season. Uh, that, of course, um, long haul travel from, from Asia is still looking a bit gloomy, right. but uh, European travel European travel has reco is recovering really fast. UK travel is recovering really fast. Latin American travel to Spain. Of course, we have these historical links with, with Latin America. It's, it's not only recovering, it's growing in some, in, in some parts. So, and, 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 and the same with the US. You have to know that we opened last year, just summer last year, June last year. Right. Um, in that time, we recovered. Um, over a third of U.S. visitation to Spain in 2019. Um, air capacity, um, it's already, you know, almost at 2019 levels uh, from the U.S. to, to Spain. So I think it's, we, we, I mean, we have learned to say that <laughs> we, we have learned not to forecast for too long. But right. uh, at this time of the year, things look that they are, they are, we're going to have a good year. Well, you answered you, you answer my next question, which was, you know, are, are U.S. airlines getting back there? And I think there's been a lot of announcements recently. And, and really, uh, there really has been pretty good connectivity restored between the U.S. and Spain by major carriers, right? Yes, we are, we are very happy. Out of the 24 routes that we had in 2019 between any U.S. city and any um, Spanish airport, we have recovered between 22 and 23. Um, uh, some new routes are, for example, New York City to Mallorca in the Balearic Islands, direct route, um, and another route, direct uh, flight from um, New York to Tenerife in the in the Canary Islands in the in the Atlantic. So um, uh, we have very exciting exciting new direct flights. Uh, we have recovered most of uh, the major, you know, connecting airports from the U.S. to Spain, and it's about 82, 83% of, of, of seat capacity. So, uh, you know, I, I think that anyone who wants to travel from the US to Spain has a, an easy connection of flights uh, or a direct flight. So uh, uh, either from, a, from a, a US carrier or from a, from a European carrier. So it, it, air connectivity is not going to be a problem 
um, to fly to, uh, between the U.S. and Spain. And um, because we are at the southwestern uh, corner of Europe, uh, we are closer to the United States than any other uh, continental European uh, country, and very far away from the conflict in Ukraine. So um, uh, we don't airplanes don't have to go anywhere, you know, and they don't have to redirect flights uh, to come from the U.S. to Spain. So uh, easy connectivity between the U.S. and Spain. No, and I know that is good. That is, it's been so too soon to tell how much the Ukraine conflict will affect European business. But we do have to get everybody straight on where on their geography and where uh, where you are located and where a lot of other countries are located, because it really is nowhere near the conflict as as tragic as that conflict is. Um, let, let's talk a little bit about what when you, once you get there. Uh, and I guess I didn't realize that that you have more high speed rail uh, in your country than I in, in, than anywhere else in Europe. I was going to say France. I guess I would have lost that Jeopardy question, uh, you know, because I, I, you know, it's the AVE rail system. And uh, I, I, I really want to get back and experience more of that. And that's a great way to get around Spain, right? Yeah. Um, well, Spain, we are a tourism superpower. So um, we have not just the, you know, the largest, highest speed rail network in, in Europe, but also the, the largest or, or the, the biggest airport network in, in any domestic market in Europe. Uh, we have airports, airports just about anywhere in Spain uh, that connect the, the, uh, either the, the mainland or the islands to the rest of Europe and the rest of the world. Uh, but also we have an, a domestic um, high-speed rail network that connects, for example, Barcelona with Madrid in under two and a half hours, which makes it more convenient than flying. And because you go from city center to city center without having to be an hour in advance or, or, or any of the hazards that airport you know, traveling has, um, and it's very convenient because it's also um, a cost effective. Um, right. there, is an, there is something called the Spain Rail Pass that any people who is not a resident of Spain, we are not a, as lucky as non-residents, uh, can get. Um, and, and they can buy segments of, of, of train travel, high-speed train travel um, uh, um, from, Sp from any city in Spain to any other city uh, in Spain connected by train. And it's very convenient, cheaper than, than normal fares, and, uh, and, and it's open to any international traveler that wants to discover Spain in this way, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's romantic as well. And it's also sustainable. Uh, so yes, the tour and very sustainable. Yeah. So that's a rail travel is really sustainable, and it is an incredible way to get around Spain. And yes, if you don't want to do that, yeah, there's a lot of air connectivity with, between the cities of Spain as well. Now let's let's talk to another part of the the, the tourism infrastructure. Uh, I, I was actually surprised at how many new hotels have opened up during the the pandemic period. And I know just just in the cities the cities that I visited, uh, I know Madrid, for example, has seen the number of openings with Four Seasons, which I stayed at, uh, the Mandarin Oriental Ritz, the Rosewood. Again, I stayed at uh, really, and, and most most recently, uh, we just wrote about this, the edition Madrid. So you know, hotel hotels are booming over there. Yes, and I take pride because prior to be Spain's um, uh, to be at the Spain's tourist office, I was the director of the, of Madrid office of, 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 of Madrid tourism. So um, I take pride to say that that you know it's very fruit that Madrid high end hotel scene it's absolutely booming. Um, a new four season property, a new Mandarin Oriental property, a new Rosewood property, a new Edition property, and that's just to say a few a, a few of them. Um, um, and this is making the international premium traveler to discover, you know, a vibrant and cultural city like no other in Europe, uh, with one of the best uh, museum scenes, uh, uh, I would say, in Europe or the world, like the Prado Museum or the Contemporary Art Reina Sofia Museum, uh, a, a, an, an amazing food scene. Um, but also, uh, you know, it's a vibrant, it's a, it's a capital city. Uh, uh, a European capital city that was, you know, undiscovered, especially by um, U.S. travelers. And I think right. that any U.S. traveler that comes to Madrid suddenly says, wow, this is a, you know, this is in the league of, you know, the London's Paris, Amsterdam, Berlin, Rome, 
and and it's an undiscovered uh, um, uh, European capital like like no one. So um, in in that sense, we are we are very happy that um, in addition to Barcelona, which was already a very popular you know city destination in Spain, we can take right now uh, of Madrid being added to that you know premium destination list uh, of European capitals, uh, and then other destinations within Spain which are Seville, Cordoba, Granada, favorites of US travelers in Andalusia, the south of Spain with, with heritage from, you know, and legacy from our uh, uh, Jewish and Arab and Christian uh, uh, ancestry, uh, and also the northern Spain. And, and, and let me talk a little bit about the St. James's Way or Camino de Santiago, as, okay. as we call it. It's a pilgrimage um, route from you know Central Europe that goes all the way to Santiago de Compostela, where uh, St. James is, is is buried, and uh, it's been going on for more than a thousand years, um, becoming increasingly popular not just with with you know religious pilgrims, but also with people who want to just take a while to walk or to right. ride a bicycle or to take a take. While with their uh, take a while with their families and and have a, a a vacation, which is an original way to reconnect in these times of pandemic, you know, in these pandemic times and and, and these difficult times that we are living in, is a way to reconnect while you are you know discovering um, different scenery, different cultures, different geography, different food, right. um, and I think this is a uh, something that. That is becoming increasingly popular, not just in the U.S., but in in places as far as as Korea or Japan. So yeah, so that's a way to get out into the rural parts of Spain, uh, really experience the countryside, and and really see all that. Because that was going to be one of my questions, you know, because we love the Spain cities. I mean, um, you know, the, <laughs> you, you got to understand the rivalry between uh, Madrid and Barcelona. Uh, to really understand Spain, and it's not a bad thing because boy, they compete, and uh, and not and not just on the pitch, on the football pitch, but uh, uh, it is it is just a uh, it, it's amazing to see. And, and yes, Americans know Barcelona uh, uh, because a lot of cruise ships go out of there. Uh, I again did not know Madrid as well until this past year, and Madrid is one of the most beautiful, manageable, walkable capitals uh, really in Europe, and uh, I think. It, it is finally being rediscovered and post pandemic, hopefully people, more people will go there and then get out in the countryside and figure out what else they can see in Spain. Right. Sure. And, 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 and for our viewers, um, Spain, Spain's history, um, it's full of, of diversity. Uh, you have 700 of Arab influence in Andalusia in the South of Spain. But also the north of Spain was part of the Celt world, together with Ireland, right. and even the Vikings were there. Uh, the Romans, uh, Spain was a province of the Roman Empire. Uh, we, we had been in, in, in America afterwards. So Spain is a crossroads of cultures and, and peoples. And, and that has a, a reflection in the country, in, in the food, in, in, in the heritage, in, you know, in the way we look, in, in the way we behave in our language. So... Spain is a small cultural, you know, continent in itself because right. you can see places related to the northern European culture in the north of Spain, but then Arab heritage and Jewish heritage in the south of Spain, Roman in the Mediterranean uh, side of Spain, um, and it's it's very diverse. And I think that um, going away from the big cities, which are you know cultural hubs, like any other big city in Europe, probably. Uh, with a distinct way, but also once you get out of those cities, you see that there is so much culture that you can that American travelers can relate to, because American travelers come from all these you know cultural origins and sure. traditions from European backgrounds, but also from Arab backgrounds or from you know African backgrounds, and and all of those backgrounds in some way or another are present in Spain. Because everyone has been here, we've been invaded by everyone. <laughs> but now you're now now you're you're on your own, and, and boy, I tell you, you go over there. It really is a microcosm, uh, a melting pot, if you will, uh, which you don't expect to see. But the history, and also the history of the U.S. and Spain, is so interconnected that uh, people will suddenly. You know, I remember going to uh, 
where was I once? Uh, uh, you know, the, 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 there was a great American author uh, who was stationed there, and I'm blanking on him right now. Uh, who was stationed in Spain. Washington Irving? Probably. Thank you, Washington right. Irving. And I'm like seeing the Washington Irving Hotel, and uh, I actually uh, used to live in Irvington, New York, where he was. He had his house. So I'm saying, what is this doing here? And so you find these cultural connections all over the all over the place, and uh, that's where the Alhambra Palace is too, which is incredible incredible place yeah. and he it was, was it was there. washington irving that discovered the alhambra palace to the world it was it was a in, in ruins and then and, and not appreciated as much in spain because it was in ruins and then he he said wow this is a you know this is a jewel and uh, that was 200 years ago um, yeah, that, um, it, and, thank, and we are thankful to him and, and there are many places in spain called after washington irving yeah, no, that is great. And it was so fun to, to go there and see little plaques on the walls and see the some hotel named after him. So there are these connections that the U.S. has that you're suddenly going to you know, be much, very much surprised at. Now, let's turn to, you know, you obviously have a lot of things going on in Spain on the, in this year, next year, uh, even into t up to 26. Tell us a little bit about some of the major events and celebrations taking place in Spain that maybe travel advisors can key into uh, to get their clients over there to experience these things. Okay, so we've talked about one of them, which is the the uh, St. James's Way, right. San Camino de Santiago. So the pilgrimage, it's it's a holy pilgrimage in, in certain years. It's every 10 or 15 years that the, the Vatican says, okay, this is a holy year for the pilgrimage to Santiago de Compostela. Uh, and this year, 2022, is a holy year uh, for the pilgrimage. So um, we expect a huge numbers of, um, of, of visitors uh, for the St. James's Way, which is not going to be crowded anyway, because you can do the way from many different places and cities. And, and it's the French way, and it's the North way, and it's the way, the Southern way. So you just have to choose the one you, you, you want, really, to, to experience that, uh, that type of traveling uh, that you can do by 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 foot or you can do by bike by bicycle or you can do it by, by horse car whatever you want also right. 2023 is, is going to be a very special year because we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the death of picasso picasso right. was a spanish painter he was born in, in in spain in malaga in the city of malaga um and then he moved to paris um, um at, you know when he was uh, starting to eat his professional uh, uh, painting career, but he, he always kept a, uh, uh, he was, for example, the director of the Prado Museum at some point before the Civil War in Spain. So, uh, so he always kept um, um, a connection with Spain and, and some of his major paintings are um, um, in Spain or, you know, of the Spanish themes. Um, uh, and we are celebrating that anniversary with major exhibitions in all major places where Picasso right. um, had a, you know, a, a lived in Spain, Malaga, Barcelona, Madrid, La Coruña in, in northern Spain, and we will have a, you know, a whole program of activities relating to, to to the life of Picasso and exhibitions with Picasso's paintings. We're doing this with together with France. So um, after 2020, this is going to be from the end of 22 all 23 and, and, and the beginning of the year 2024. Right. Um, we, will, we will publish uh, the program uh, um, uh, shortly. And I think this is going to be, a, um, for art lovers and, and, and culture lovers, is going to be a, a unique occasion to discover Red Scope, one of the great geniuses of, of the 20th century. Um, uh, and, 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 you know, it's, it makes it special, I think, when, when you see a great painting, anywhere in the world, any of the great museums of the world is great. But when you see, for example, one of Velasquez or Goya's or, or even Picasso's paintings and you see the sunsets and you are say like, oh, what an amazing sunset. But then you're in Madrid and like in the picture I have behind me, you see that those sunsets reflect the sunsets of where they were, these paintings were painted, uh, reflect the sunsets of a certain place, which is in this case, for example, Madrid. Right. It makes it special. It makes it special to see a painting where it was painted or where that painter was born 
and where he had his color palette built. And I think that is really relevant. 20, you know, and, and those are two major events. Of course, all the music festivals that were on before the pandemic are going to be on this year. I'm, I'm talking about, for example, for the young, well, young and not so young visitors, uh, uh, music festivals like Primavera Sound in Barcelona or okay. a Sonar Festival in Barcelona. Those, all of those, um, you know, are back. And any other major event like Fires in Valencia are are going to be back this year. No, that's great. And uh, you know, I, I do know, I do know exactly what you're talking about with the paintings because walking around the Prado and seeing, you know, Goya and Velasquez in Madrid was a very different experience than seeing them in other. Uh, you know, uh, other other museums around the world. And of course, you also have a lot of athletic events coming up. You have, I believe, the uh, a golf tournament in 2023, the uh, Solheim Cup. Uh, and then in this is sort of going out a little more about 2026, you have the Valencia, the gay games in Valencia as yes. well. Yeah, Spain is a very diverse, I mean, an accepting country. We have one of the most progressive, um, um, uh, you know, um, laws regarding the LGBTQ plus community. Uh, so uh, we hosted World Pride in Madrid a, a few years ago, and uh, we are happy to, to see that um, the gay games are happening in Valencia in 2026. So we, are, uh, we have to train hard to, and, and try to be there. Absolutely. Well, we're looking forward to that. And I especially am looking forward to the Picasso uh, next year. I'm definitely going to have to return uh, to go back because uh, there's some places like I did not get to the museum. I, I want to go see uh, the last time I saw the Guernica uh, was uh, was in the, in the Metropolitan uh, uh, Museum of Modern Art, I should say, in New York. Uh, and now it's it's back in, in, in Madrid. So uh, I definitely want to go remember that. Now, um, what resources can travel advisors turn to in order to get more information about Spain? Uh, I know you have four offices in the U.S. and Canada, uh, but tell me about some of the websites, some of the other information. Yes. Um, so we do have, as you were mentioning, uh, four offices in the, in the U.S., one in New York, uh, which is our central office in, 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 in the country, and then one in Miami, Chicago, and Los Angeles. Um, also, we do have a, a website, which is Spain.info, where they can find, you know, inspiration for traveling to Spain. Um, in the, we do have um, um, educational and training programs for agents, for travel agents. Um, they should contact um, um, our offices in, 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 in the country uh, for um, uh, instructions on how to uh, run those programs. Okay. Um, and... And, and then, center, you know, in, in our um, headquarters in Madrid, we are always at, at their disposal. But the easiest way is to look up in, um, in the Internet um, the, the closest, you know, tourist office of Spain in the U.S. or Canada and, and, and get, a, get in touch with them. Well, and also get a chance to get over and travel in Spain and really learn how to sell it better. Uh, which is even the best way to do it, I think, personally. But now uh, we, we go out to about 100,000 travel advisors in the U.S., a little bit in Canada. What would else would you like to say to them about uh, Spain's tourism today and what it will be in the future? Well, I think that Spain, we've talked about it. It's, it's, a, it's a world leader, leader when we, we talk about tourism. It's, it's the second most visited country in the world. Um, so in regards to infrastructure, um, airports, ports, roads, Health infrastructure, hospitals, doctors—it's it's world leader. I mean, it's comparable comparable to any you know destination um, in the U.S. or um, other destinations in Europe. But I think it makes it you know a, a destination to be discovered and rediscovered. It would, what we were mentioning before about the diversity of Spain. Right. Spain is a you know kind of a undiscovered. Uh, destination in the U.S. We had 3.3 million visitors in 2019, which are a lot of visitors, but we still are, you know, less visited than other popular destinations in Europe, than like France or, or Italy. Um, and people get surprised when they get, they they come here because it's not only the um, you know the European you know flavor that they they ha they discover in Spain. But also all this diversity that we were talking about, like the Arab influence, the Celtic influence, um, you know, the North African influence. It's the, um, you know, the connection between Spain and Latin America, which is 
you know, it's it's very profound and, and it's a deep link that and, and heritage that we share with our, you know, um, Latin American countries, our, you know, brothers. Yeah. And it's, it, so I, I think that um, many of my friends, what I have to tell them, uh, okay, if, if they ask me to, to plan a trip for them in Spain and say like, well, you have to take it by parts. It's this year you come to the South and next year you go to the North and, and then you, you have to discover the Mediterranean coast and the islands and then the Canary Islands, which are, you know, off the African coast of, of, of um, in the Atlantic. Um, and I think that this sense of diversity, this sense of, of, of melting pot or cultural hub, it's something that people do not know before coming and that they discover when they are here. And I think that you you have to prepare your your clients and, and, and your customers to um, to say, okay, Spain is something that you can visit once, but you can revisit uh, two, three or four times and you will discover a totally different, you know, to scenery, uh, green in the north, more. It's, it's like in the US, if you go to, I, I lived in Seattle. So if you live in Seattle, everything is green. But then you drive south to California and everything starts to look more yellowish. Sure. Um, but that is over, over you know, 4,000 kilometers or 3,000 kilometers. In Spain, it's over 500 kilometers, which is 300 miles. Um, so this is something that I think that is, is unique about this country. And, and I think that it, 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 it's very connected to, to the American culture and tradition and history. Sure. And people will relate very easily to um, any Spanish de destination. I think that is a big plus for, for Spain. Well, as you said, it is time to rediscover Spain in this post-pandemic. Uh, everything is getting opening up. There's a, incredible destinations, even discovering the major cities as I did with Madrid. Uh, and I'm looking forward to getting back. Uh, Miguel, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time to speak with me today. Uh, and I only hope that we can meet in person soon. Uh, and I can get back to the, the, the scene that I, is behind me now uh, in the middle of, uh, of Madrid, the Plaza Mayor. And it would be just amazing to get back there and then go out and see the rest of Spain. Because uh, as you said, there's so much to discover. And again, for all you out there, all your clients out there uh, who are thinking about heading back to Europe, uh, hopefully Spain is on top of your list to, to go visit again. And again, thank you, Miguel, for, for, for talking with us today. Thank you. And I hope to welcome you very, very soon in, in Spain again. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report. <laughs>